welcome back to the Knits and Beads podcast. Uh, this is episode number 39. My name is Lorelai Erdo. I'm a jewelry designer in upstate New York, and I knit in my free time. This is my knitting podcast. I am coming to you from upstate New York, and you can find me all over the internet if you'd like to look me up. I'm on Ravelry and Instagram as Lorelai Erdo. And I'm on Facebook as Lorelei Hill Erdo. And I have an Etsy store and a website. My website is LoreleiErdo.com where you can find uh, jewelry for sale, ebooks, and tutorials on jewelry design. Uh, and also some of my sewn things and even some of my knit things. And then on my Etsy store, it's just jewelry and it's LoreleiErdoJewelry.etsy.com. We do have a Ravelry group for the podcast, and if you go to the Groups tab, just search Knits and Beads Podcast to find it. Um, and speaking of which, if any of you know how to close a thread or lock a thread, please let me know. I cannot figure out how to do that, and I've been getting comments in my giveaway thread after I've already <laughs> drawn winners. So I don't know how to close that. Um, I don't know if I have to delete it. I don't think I do. I think I can lock it, but I have no idea how to do that. So if you have any comments about how to do that, leave a comment in the, uh, down below the video. So um, I have a bunch to talk about today. I've got a finished object, I've got some sewing things to talk about, I'm going to update you on my current works in progress, I've got some podcasts to talk about, and some upcoming projects. So it may be a little bit longer, I'm looking at maybe 45 minutes, we'll see if I can get through it in that amount of time. Uh, the cats are being active today, so you might see them or see me run after them or they're so naughty. Anyway, um, this past week has been tough. Uh, I lost my last living grandparent. My grandfather passed away pretty unexpectedly, although um, my mother had been living with him for the last few years, taking care of him. He's been... Um, suffering from dementia and some other health issues and so she was his full-time caretaker um, but we have noticed definite decline in his health the last few months so although to her it wasn't a huge surprise to me who doesn't see him very often because they live about two uh, two and a half hours away well, I was kind of shocked so it's very sad uh, but he was 90 so he lived a very very long life um, my grandmother passed away back in 2007, so grandparents, uh, these are my mother's parents, and although I'm not physically close to them, we always had, um, a connection, and I believe that I can stay connected with them by the things that I'm crafting, because my, um, my grandpa used to help my grandmother quilt and um, they've done a lot of quilting. They quilted a lot of pieces for the grandchildren and their children and I just feel like to be a little closer to my grandparents I've been sewing a lot the last couple of days and it just makes me feel closer to them so but I brought down the quilt that they made me for my wedding and I wanted to show it to you. So my grandparents gifted this to me at the wedding <laughs> and it's gorgeous. They didn't do the, the quilting, that they did all the piecing. Um, and they, they sent it to a local quilter to do the, a long arm quilter to do all the quilting because they just didn't have the, the means to do that, but um, they worked on this together and it was just such a nice gift and I will cherish it always. They, uh, my grandmother put a panel in 
and it says, made by Faye and Julia Morris for their granddaughter, Lorelei Hill, and presented it on her wedding day to her and Joseph Erdo. May they live many happy years together, July 5th, 2002. So it's just the sweetest gift. And uh, at that time in my life, I was all about, you can see the stars on the background, I was all about Americana. Um, Joe and I had a house in Rome, New York, and it was a little cape, and I had it outfitted <laughs> from top to bottom with all kinds of Americana stuff. So I was all about red, white, and blue. That was the theme of our wedding was red, white, and blue. We got married the day after July 4th. So uh, th that's how I the quilt is in these, these colors. So... Anyway, I just wanted to show that to you because it's awesome and I love them and I'm going to miss my grandfather immensely. <sighs> anyway, I have been sewing up a storm so I'm just going to go right into what I've been sewing. Um, the first thing I found, uh, let me show you that book. I bought this book a while ago and I love it. And if you haven't looked at it yet, um, definitely, definitely pick up a copy. I don't know if they have it at your library. You can check there. It's Anna Graham, or she's also known as Noodlehead, Handmade Style. It, this is an awesome book. I've made a couple of the things in here, and I wanted to try my hand at the double zip wallet. I'll show you the picture. Now, at first glance, I thought, I'll never be able to do that. Oh my gosh, two zippers. But I was feeling particularly inspired by sewing, and I wanted to give it a to give it a go. So the first one that I made, I actually can't show you because it now currently has a new owner. Um, but I can show you the second and third. The second one came out better than the third. I'm not sure why, unless I was just getting burnt out. Um, but this is the one, the second one that I had made. This fabric is awesome. Uh, I got it on Etsy and it came in a fat quarters set. So I have a little magnetic clasp on there. It opens up and there's card slots. And then the top zips open and it's canvas on the interior. And then the bottom also zips open and really fun project as you can see because I made several of them. Um, Then this one was the third one I had done. Love that fabric too. This one didn't turn out as well though because I'm not gonna show you up close, but that's, there's some things. <laughs> there's some issues. I'm not the best sewer, okay? I'm learning. Um, but there's card slots. The only problem that I have with this pattern is that I feel like it needs stiffer interfacing. It calls for uh, interfacing, like woven interfacing, and I don't know if you've ever seen it, but it's pretty thin. It's almost like a gauzy, it's an iron-on um, fusible interfacing, but it really doesn't make the fabric very stiff at all. And then this pattern has you do that um, woven interfacing on the exterior pieces and then on the interior is that uh, canvas but otherwise there's no fleece interfacing or anything any other interfacing so I just kind of feel like when you open the wallet your cards are gonna come right out I feel like this part and maybe I didn't 
I don't think I did it wrong. Um, but I just feel like the card slots should be on this side and that this pocket should be on the bottom because I just, I don't know, I feel like things are going to fall out as soon as you open that up. Unless you're opening it flat and, you know, you have to kind of be cognizant to do that. But um, anyway, while it's just something different to work on, you know, I'm, I'm, look, I'm trying. So... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, the other thing I sewed up was uh, another project bag, and this is actually available in my web store if you're interested in looking at more pictures of it and details of it, but it's lined, and I made a little matching Notions pouch that comes with it. It's cute. I really love this fabric, too. Uh, I got this in Vermont last summer. It's just a fun fabric, and it kind of reminds me of Greece for some reason, I don't know. My grandmother on my father's side was from Greece, so I have Greek heritage. Something about it just speaks Greece to me. I think maybe it's the colors, but it's a nice canvassy material. It's not, um, it's not regular quilting cotton. And I did a fleece interfacing in it, so it's nice and squishy. And this is, would be a great project bag for, I don't know, like a two skein project, a shawl project. And then I also found another pattern online and I tried, yarns flying everywhere. I tried this pattern last night and um, it was really fun to put together. It's the idea pouch and it's made, the pattern is out by Michelle Patterns. I think it's michellepatterns.com if you wanna check out uh, the rest of her patterns. But um, it's cute, it's cute. It's a pouch that can hold, I just pulled together scraps. That's why it looks kinda, of, um, I, I don't know. This is like a teal left over from another project that I had done. And then I, I pulled this out, but I mean, all the colors are in this butterfly fabric, but anyway, you put your Kindle in there or your uh, journals or your bullet journals, which are really popular right now. Um, it could possibly also fit like a, an iPad or a tablet. And then in this pocket, which it's hard to see because I did it in the same fabric, but there are pens and pencil slots. And then you could put other things in there if you wanted to, but it has like this nice pleated feature so it opens up nice and wide. And um, I did kind of monkey this up a little bit. So this will be a gift, but... I think I might give it to my mom, actually. Um, we're going down to my grandfather's uh, funeral tomorrow, so I'll be able to see my mom. And I'll be able to see my sister, which is nice, because I haven't seen her in a while. We actually still haven't exchanged our, our Christmas gifts, but I don't think I'm going to do that tomorrow, because, you know, time. But um, this is a fun project if you have... A couple of hours the most work is in is involved in cutting the fabric there is inter interfacing um, I actually ran out of interfacing and so I didn't do interfacing on this layer but I did do it on this pink layer it's good it's a good little project and actually I want to make it again and I'll show you the fabric I'm gonna try that in um, later. Uh, later in the podcast, I'm talk about some new fabric I bought. So yeah, idea pouch, Michelle Patterns. Check it out if you're a sewer. Uh, moving right along. Oh, before I stop that. So quilting. I've never really had a huge interest in quilting, but I am getting kind of excited to possibly participate in Jacqueline Salem. She is the host of the Brooklyn Knit Folk podcast. She's going to be doing a quilt along. 
And the first video on choosing fabrics is up on her YouTube channel now. So go check that out. I know you'll get excited. She has a really great downloadable uh, supplies list already set up for you. And she goes through that supplies list in this first video. I think I'm going to do it. I don't know. I really want to go and buy fabric, but I don't have the money to do that right now. So I, um, it may be a scrappy quilt, which I'm okay with that. I think that's um, kind of fun. So, of course, my nose is dripping, so I'm going to go get a tissue. We'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that. Um, all right, so what was I talking about? We're going to move right into finished objects. I have one finished object today. I have finished the Homestead shawl. This is designed by Melody of Mandarines. It's a paid-for pattern on Ravelry. I knit it out of old wool, local, in these four colors. Juneberry, Purple Loose Strife, Bee Balm, and Alum Root. I have my show notes here, so I wrote all everything down for you today. You're welcome. <laughs> I know I don't normally do that. I fly by the seat of my pants, but not today. I'm organized. This shawl is the bomb and you need to knit it right now. So go to your stash, find worsted weight yarn. Uh, shoot, I didn't, well you can look it up on Ravelry. I'm sorry, I don't have all the info, but it takes, I used four skeins and I didn't use all of the skeins, obviously. Um, so I think I used about six to 700 yards of fat, of yarn like I said worsted weight but I decided to do it she does she did hers in a lovely one color kind of a light gray and it's gorgeous um but I love color I love neutrals too but I really love color so I wanted to do something in this ombre effect I had bought these four colors to do in a shawl uh, a while back after I had discovered O wool at Rhinebeck last year last year so, uh, I loved knitting this pattern. It's got a lot of garter. It's got some eyelets. It's got some Estonian braid, which is really fun to knit. I just really had a great time knitting this. Uh, I started with the darkest color and ended with the Bee Balm, which is the lightest color. And I actually bought another even lighter color wild geranium which is more of a light lavender pink color but I didn't end up needing it so I think it's plenty big the it's my wingspan and I am 5'9 so it's really big it's kind of an asymmetrical triangle and I've been wearing it a lot a lot a lot it's awesome it is cozy um the yarn softened up quite a bit in the washing, and um, I know I told you about how it was pretty sheepy. It still is, I'm afraid. So I'm afraid that what I had hoped for with this wool wash that I had gotten, um, I don't know. I was kind of hoping for more of the redwood, rosewood um, scent, but I used twig and horn, wool soap, with lanolin in it and when and I think the lanolin is what softened up the yarn a little bit and it um it has a really subtle scent so I I can smell it but I think if I washed it again I would have um even more of the scent so I don't know if I'm gonna wash it again but Love the softness, a little disappointed with the scent. That's my overall uh, feeling about the wool soap from Twig and Horn. That is my only finished object this week, but I absolutely adore this shawl. So if you are looking for a worsted shawl pattern, 
this is it. I really loved it. I just think it was really meditative to knit on and I loved the old wool. It's probably the wooliest wool that I've ever knit with so far. I'm um, usually knitting with um, merino, but, or, you know, softer superwash type yarns, but this, this is really nice. I would knit with old wool local in a heartbeat. And I just remembered I forgot to show, to bring down yarn that I had bought from Old Wool recently when I ordered the another skein of the lighter color just to make sure I had enough. I um, they had their bulky weight yarn on sale for fifty percent off, and I bought five I think skeins of the. It's kind of like that yellowy green color. Maybe I will do a little um, video and I will insert it here. So this is the old wool that I had gotten on sale. It's the Balance Bulky. It was 50% off. And the colorway is sulfur. So what I guess I didn't realize was that it's a 50% organic cotton and 50% merino. Each skein is 106 yards. So, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it just because of the cotton. But it's, there's no stretch really. It's pretty cottony. Which is okay because it's soft, but I think it'll be great for like a bulky shawl. I'm looking forward to it. I don't know. I don't have anything picked out for it yet, so it might sit in my stash for a little bit, but... I know I shouldn't be buying yarn, but I am. I just think it's cool. I like it. I like it. I'm going to talk a little bit about my whips that I'm working on. Let's see. I will update you on the Ariat shawl, which I'm housing in my matter root bag. This is coming along. I worked a little bit on it yesterday. So it's not huge. It's not attached to anything at the moment. That's why you don't see yarn, but I weaved in a bunch of my ends because they were driving me insane. Um, and when I get a little farther up, I will weave in these just to keep it neat. Um, but I am knitting this out of Haven Fiber Arts single sock yarn. It's their merino, it's a merino singles base. And the colors I'm using are Grove, which is the green. The teal is Spring Thaw and that really pale gray is snowy owl and this is the Ariat shawl by Leslie Ann Robinson or also known as Knit Graffiti on Instagram and it is an asymmetrical triangle shawl but the thing I love about this shawl pattern is that it starts at the little skinny end and then eventually gets wider all the way up. So working brioche on these shorter rows, I mean, obviously it's going to get a little bit more tedious toward the top of the shawl, but not really toward till the end. Um, I love that it's so squishy. And, you know, brioche, I just really like having a brioche project on the go along with other stuff. So I'm happy with this project so far. I, I love the colors I chose. I think it's going to be a really, really fun piece to wear. And I dig it. I'm digging it. So uh, I'm knitting that on my Haya Haya. I think I'm going to change out my needles, to be honest with you. I think I'm knitting my other shawl on my Haya Haya interchangeables as well. Yes, I am. Um, this cord is way too long for this project. And the other shawl I'm working on, I'll talk about next, I'm using like a 32 inch and it's not big enough. So I think I'm going to swap out the cords.
I don't know if I can do that safely. We'll see. I can hear Django crying upstairs. He wants to get in the closet that I had, um, I had my quilt living in. Every time I go in that closet, they like are right there. They can hear me if they are dead asleep on the other side of the house. They can hear me in that closet and they come running. I don't know what it is about that closet that they want, but I don't want them in there because there's a ton of stuff in there. And so I keep them out, but they're really upset. So he's upstairs crying at the closet right now because he wants to go in there. So my second work in progress, I'm keeping in uh, my Eldenwood craft bag. Look at that fabric. Oh my goodness. Look, look. Oh my goodness. I stinking love this bag so much. Drawstring bag. Eldenwood craft. Check them out on Etsy. Emma is amazing. I love her podcast. She also has a podcast, so check that out. Little star fabric on the interior. There's her label. I'm knitting the Sandness shawl. And it's designed by Gudrun Johnston. It's a paid for pattern on Ravelry. And I'm knitting it in on the round everyday fingering in the Mavis colorway. And it is awesome. That yarn makes me so happy. So, this, I need a bigger wire, obviously, you can see why. Uh, it's blowing out the color, but it's gorgeous speckles. And I'm telling you, on the round, this is a really great yarn. I think you should definitely check it out. So, the lacy pattern that I'm working on now, I'm thinking you'll be able to see it a little bit better once I get a little farther on it. Obviously, I just started it, so I'm only I'm only through one repeat so far. But it's basically these uh, stripes of lace. I think there's seven stripes. So I'm only about halfway through this so far. And I'm doing the smallest size. There's also a large size. I have one more skein of this. It is in the cake. It's got a nice twist on it. It feels a little wooly, but I have been told that the yarns by On the Round soften up quite a bit once they are washed. On the Round is on Etsy, I believe. Uh, yeah, she does have an, uh, an Etsy store, I think, and also on the round .com. Um, It's a dyer out of Maine. Anywho, uh, I've got this much left of the first skein, so I think I'm doing good yarn-wise, and I just, I really, really like this pattern. So I knit the interior stockinette panel from the bottom up, and then you pick up the stitches to do the lace, but it's really nice and simple, and... It's a great pattern, and I'm really wanting to do more patterns like this. So I'm going to do some research uh, because Gudrun Johnston says that she kind of followed a popular technique style when she designed this piece, and I want to look that up and, uh, and do more of that. So anyway, this is going to be a really cool shawl, I think. And I'm really enjoying working on it. Uh, I haven't worked on it too, too much the last few days because my third whip has me whipped. <laughs> I'm so freaking clever. I know you guys will love me. So I am obsessed with this project. Obsessed. And you're going to be like, what's the big deal? It's stacking it. Sometimes that's what you need. Sometimes that's exactly what I need. I need just stockinette. Like, don't worry about anything else. It's perfect TV knitting, podcast knitting, and I love it. I am knitting the Mezzo cardigan. That's right, it's a cardigan. Uh, but it's more like a shrug. 
I'll insert a picture here so you can see what it looks like because I printed out the pattern but the picture I was running out of ink or something. It's by Alexis Winslow. I'm knitting it on a US size 9 needle. Um, and it's a great stash buster, I have to admit, uh, because you knit it in a DK weight held together with a fingering weight. And I had a bunch of DK weight in one color, so I thought, perfect, I'll just pull in different colors from the fingering weights. Um, so my main color that I'm knitting it in is DK, and the DK I'm using is this, Knit Pick Swish DK. This is the Squirrel Heather color, and it's kind of a soft, taupey brown gray color. And I had uh, about seven, I think, skeins of this. I'm hoping that'll be enough, but you know what? If not, I'll just go online and order more. It's no big deal. It's no big deal. Uh, so the other colors I pulled together are all kind of soft tones. I wanted it to have kind of a soft look to it. So basically, as you saw in the picture, hopefully, it's a big cardigan shrug type of thing and there are blocks of color and really simple to knit it's all stockinette this is what I've got so far so I started out uh, with my swish DK and I am you and I used um, Manos del Uruguay in watered silk it's kind of a pale blue color and it was left over from my Stephen West mystery knit along shawl and it's so soft because that uh, Manos is has silk in it I think it's super soft it might be just a s merino single but it's really soft and you know this Swish DK is really soft too this is what I knit my campsite shawl in, and I actually really like this yarn a lot. Uh, it is a super wash yarn, but it doesn't feel plasticky to me. It feels merino-y. It's really nice. Then I pulled out this. Now, this and this, there's not a whole lot of... It's pretty much the same tone. So I started doing it. I started knitting with it. And I don't know if you can see there. It's just so subtle. I didn't know if I was going to be able to really see it. And so I switched it. But you know what? I kind of like that little thin stripe. So I might do that little thinner stripe between the blocks of other colors. And then, oh, so this is silk. I'm sorry. This is um, Alpaca Cloud by Knit Picks. And it's like a, it's pretty much a lace weight. It's really thin fingering. I, and I really um, wasn't liking knitting with it by itself, but I really love knitting it held together. This is my first time, by the way, let's talk t technique for a minute. This is my first time knitting with two strands at the same time. And I have to say, I really am loving it. I, I, um, I didn't know how I was going to feel about it. I thought it was going to be fiddly. It's not. It's super easy. And I really love holding a thinner and thicker yarn together. So this is uh, Alpaca Cloud. Then I moved on to this darker pink color, which is Quince and Company. And I forgot to write down the color name. I think it's um, starts with an S. I'll put it here on the screen for you. This is uh, Turn, I believe. And I have a bunch of this, so I figured I would use it because I wasn't sure how I was liking the color. But with these colors, I really love it. I mean, it's just so soft and gorgeous. Am I right? Like, 
This is gonna be so nice to wear. I'm so excited. I am obsessed with this. Oh my god. I love it. So, all right, so I've got those colors. Then another color I pulled to use. Did I drop that stamp? Yes, I did. Is Madeline Tosh. This is also left over from my Mystery Knit Along Cal Stephen Westall. This is a uh, Euro sock, and the colorway is called Abiquiu or something like that. I'm not sure how to say it. Abiqui. But it's just really kind of the same tones, browns, and then little pops of teal. And there's some black speckles in there, too. But I think that will look cool held together with the with that. And then I picked out um, these a lot of the, this is left over. This is left over from a three color cashmere cowl that I had knit. This is Plucky Knitter Small Batch, and I can't remember the number. It might be 23. I don't know. So it's a really soft blue color, kind of similar to that, but with speckles. So it's got some pink and green and rust colored speckles in it. And then to pull in a dark color, I pulled out this. This is Shibui Knit's Staccato Fingering, and the colorway is Velvet. So that'll be a nice dark contrast color. And I think I might see what else I've got. I'm thinking I might need some more options. I don't know. I cannot tell you how much I love this. I don't know why. It's just something about it. Now, I saw this cardigan first on a new podcast that I had just discovered, and I'll talk more about her podcast later, but um, the Wool Jewel podcast with Caitlin. Caitlin was wearing the cardigan, the mezzo cardigan, and she knit hers in really nice soft colors also. And with her DK weight yarn, that was a real neutral kind of same almost same color I think I might be wrong but she held her DK weight together with um some what is that called it's like a mohair mohair like a lace weight fuzzy and so hers is really nice and fuzzy it looks so cozy but I just don't have any of that so I'm just using what I've got because I'm stash busting because make whips not waste <laughs> and um I'm just it's amazing it's amazing I don't know why but I'm loving it I could knit on it all day okay moving right along podcasts so yeah, Caitlin's podcast. She's got three or four episodes out so far. I've loved every single one. She has an incredible podcast. She is uh, an American living in Germany with her husband. And she just, she makes really interesting projects. She's not just a sock knitter. She, uh, she is actually more of a sweater knitter. And did I mention her last week? I might have. Well, on my last podcast, I don't know. Did I? Wool Jewel? Wool Jewel. Um, she has a great production. She does great editing. Um, and she has really insightful chatter about her projects. So it's not just like mine where I'm like, mm, here, this is what I'm working on. Oh, I love it. I love the yarn. I love this fabric. I love this. I love that. I know. I'm not, you know, I'm, it is what it is. She has a great podcast anyway. I need you to go check it out. Another one that I found recently is Wool Needles Hands podcast with Taylor. Taylor is living in Las Vegas, Nevada with her husband and her two-year-old son, Angus. And she has a really great podcast also. Really cool, fun editing, great quality, interesting topics. Yeah, like dyeing yarn. She just started experimenting with dyeing yarn and they're great. The, she also has like separate vlogs in between her podcasts, which is cool. I think she does like a bi-weekly podcast, but then sometimes 
in the middle of those, she'll do a vlog. And she knits a lot of socks and sweaters and shawls. So, like, all the things except socks that I enjoy. Um, she's working on a lot of interesting projects. And I highly recommend her podcast. Another one is... Nope, I guess that's it. I thought there was another one I wanted to mention. Well, I'll go over it next time. So, let's see. Before I talk about... Well, yeah, I'll talk about that now. So, I got my yarn for my next sweater. The Lulu Sweater Pullover by Amy Miller. Let me remind you what that looks like. I... It's not this purple. It's periwinkle, but it's not quite so purple. It's a little bit more blue than this. So, blown out by the window. But this is Baraco Ultra Alpaca. This is what her sample was knit in. It's super fine alpaca. I don't know if you can hear the cat, but he's sitting on his perch on the window right now. And he does not like the crows. And there's a lot of crows out there lately. And he chatters at them. It's hilarious. Um, anyway, 50% Peruvian wool and super fine alpaca. So I was wondering how it was going to be. If it was going to be really, um, if it was going to be really fuzzy or, but it's really not too bad at all. There is a little bit of a haze on it, but not not ter. It's not terrible. You can see it. But I love the color, and I'm really excited. I definitely want to swatch, so I just haven't gotten up the enough courage to do it. I want to swatch the iCord cast on and the texture. There's also gauge for the sleeve, which is done in a knit pearl pattern, so I might have to do two swatches. I'm hoping I have enough yarn to do that, but um, swatching, man, it's pain. It's like... I just want to start the sweater already. But anyway, I got seven skeins of this and I'm ready. I'm ready. I wish that that wasn't showing up so purple. It's not purple. I mean, periwinkle, yeah, it is kind of a purple, but it just looks more blue to me. But anyway. Uh, and I mentioned those fabrics that I had gotten. I went to Joanne Fabrics and I picked up this. I just thought the colors were so awesome. And if you look up close, it's kind of uh, like they're like tickets. It's fun, right? I don't know. I just love it. And I picked up this coordinating fat quarter to go with it. It's kind of got little purple. The color is just perfect with that. It's the same red color. So I'll play around with that. That'll be fun. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about. Yeah, see, here we are. 42 minutes. I'm almost done, I promise you. I've been collecting my yarn ends. Every time I, tr I weave in my ends and trim them, I have been collecting them in a suet container for the birds. And I'm ready to put this outside. So... I'm excited. I think that they're going to have fun pimping out their nests. We have a really large bird community here in my neighborhood because we feed the we feed them all year. And so I have quite a few. And we have a couple bird houses on the property and they always get bird families. A lot of sparrows, a lot of finches, um, juncos. We had juncos last year. They were so cute. Oh my god. So anyway, these are for my birdies. I don't even know where I came up with this idea or where I found it. I saw it somewhere online. And I'm sure you'll see it around also. But I think that it's really cute and fun. I'm not sure where I'm going to hang this yet. Um, probably outside near where a lot of... They hang out a lot in some cedar hedges that are kind of on my side lawn and so I think I'll hang it out there somewhere for them but yeah so that's that I guess is all I've got for today 
Uh, if you are a returning viewer, welcome back. Oh, before I go, I have one more thing to say. Um, this is a little message going out to Rebecca of the Bean Girls podcast. Where's my Christmas card, huh? Where's my Christmas card? I know you have it. I gave you my address, and now I have no Christmas sh cards show for it. So you make me do all that work. And now I have nothing. Where's my Christmas card, dude? On that note, goodbye. See you guys next time. Hopefully in a week or two. Um, and I can't wait to show you my future uh, progress. So again, thank you so much for coming over. And I will check. I will, um, I will see you on the flip side. <laughs> Bye.